Sonia, muchos, muchos, muchos gracias. <laughs> That's the extent of my Spanish. <laughs> but the language of the heart, English, Spanish, there is a language of the heart that reminds us that there is a light, there is a fire, there is a sun burning at the center of every single person in creation. And it keeps us going and it keeps us burning to the extent that we allow ourselves to recognize it, to remember it. There is something so beautifully profound about you. Sometimes you remember it. Sometimes you forget it. Let this be a day of remembrance as we dance in that flame, as we allow ourselves to paint with the fire of a passion by a thousand names. We can call it the Christ. You can call it the Buddha. You can call it the Tao. You can call it the Atman. You can call it Bob. It doesn't matter. It's there. There's something within you. Let it shine more magnificently today than ever before. Today, I want to call it the creative energy. An interpretation from the first chapter of John through the lens of one of my heroes, Matthew Fox. In the beginning was the creative energy. The creative energy was with God and the creative energy was God. And through it all things came to be. Not one thing had its being yet through it. A light that shines in the darkness, a light that darkness could not overpower. The creative energy was the true light. And that, in light, that light enlightens all people. It was in the world, and the world did not know it. It was in you, and you didn't know it. And somebody kicked you behind and woke you up to it. That's not Matthew Fox, that's me. But to all who did accept it, it gave the power to become the children of God. The creative energy was made flesh. It pitched its tent among us and we saw its glory. So many people are walking around saying there was only one person pitching one tent in one person at one point in history. We come together as a community and say, no, the, the tent is being pitched right now in this now moment. As there is an awakening in your consciousness, not only a, a tent is going up, but a high rise that says, yes, I will shine. I will no longer play small. I know who I am. I know where I come from. I know where I'm going. And nothing is going to keep me from being the full expression of that light that I am. We are told in Scripture that we are born in the image and after the likeness of God. And that's interpreted a thousand different ways. Today, I'm going to interpret it that you were born in the image and after the likeness of creative energy itself. In the image of God means you are creative. You are placed here on this planet to be a creative being, to bring something to this earthly existence that did not exist before you came here. The Gospel of Thomas says, bring forth that which is within you and it will give you life. But it goes on, don't bring it forth and it will destroy you. Which way are you going to go? To life or to destruction? You get to be the producer and the director of the drama that is your life. You see, we are designed by nature as free and gifted vessels of innovation. Fertile, fertile containers of life longing for itself. A vision and possibility and anything. Anything short of answering the call of that which has been placed within you, that's the fall from grace. Any decision or choice that you make to play small is a fall from grace. And it's usually because there's been a decision to have a knowledge that there is good creativity and there is bad creativity. You are an artist. You are a dancer. You're going to discover that a little bit later today. Breathe. They just got a little nervous, Sonia. Did you feel the room suddenly changed? Good. That's something within you that needs to be addressed today. When I said I might ask you to stand and move your body, there was panic with all the men in the room. <laughs> and then I said, maybe you're going to sing a little bit, and we're going to improvise together today. And there was a little part of you that said, holy crap, why did I come today? <laughs> that's the part I want to speak to, because that's the part that has shut down the Christ of your nature. That's the thought coming from whatever place, we can call it the human ego, that said, God makes junk. God doesn't make junk. God made you and you are perfect, whole, and complete the way God created you to be in all of your insecurities and all of your flaws, 
You know, there is a belief system on the planet that every work of art must have a crack because that's where the light comes through. I'm saying let your light shine more magnificently than ever before by being cracked up. <laughs> Fill the crack as they do in Asian traditions with gold. Let there be gold in the crack in such a way that says, this is who I am and I will not make apology for it. I am the light of the world. I am unique and beautiful. And I want to explore that. What are the tools that we have to express that Christ light? God expresses that creativity. It shows up as intuition. Let's read these words together. God expresses as intuition, imagination, improvisation, instinct, inspiration. They all start with the letter I. God expressed as you, then I show up as intuition. I show up as imagination. Say it with me. I show up as improvisation. I show up as instinct. I show up as inspiration. Now, how many of you sitting here today, that doesn't ring true for you? How many fellow Virgos are in the room? <laughs> Let me just control my life in such a way that there is no room for improvisation. That there's no room for anything that might be out of my control. Some of us, you Geminis, have a little easier time just being free form. <laughs> you know, I have to confess, sometimes you drive us Virgos nuts. But the reality is we have something to learn from you. We have something to learn from the Christ showing up as the people in our life that go outside the box, that open the doors and the windows of the room of your life and say, there's more life to experience. There's more life to express. I want you to consider today that what I'm challenging you to do is letting go of everything except the full expression of those words. This week, to live your life in the full expression of all those words and look out because a greater version of the Christ of your being is about to emerge. Let your work, your work. What are you going to do tomorrow when you go into work and you go, hey, boss, I'm here to improvise today. <laughs> now you have to play, play into Caesar what is Caesar's, play within the rules and the constructs of your work, but find a way to go outside of it and you will change forever the environment of your work. You go home to your family and they expect you to show up this way, the way you've shown up for the last 40 years. Play within the constructs, pay into Caesar what is Caesar's, but be the veritable presence of love through an instinct that says, maybe I'll do it a little bit differently. I remember the moment I went home and I hugged my mother for the first time in my 50 years. Boy, was it uncomfortable. We don't hug in the Burdick household. <laughs> I was born into a family of Virgos. Two grandmothers, and my father had twin boys on his birthday. Holy mackerel, my poor mother needed a hug. She was surrounded with everything being controlled. My family never found God until I had a little instinct that said, hug your mother. My mother wept like a baby, and it was like what I could feel. What the hell took you so long? God came through my willingness to step out of the norm, to step out of the box and let a greater version of light. To this day, my mother is the first one that says, I love you. <sighs> feel that. It took somebody to go out of the box to make that happen. I want to share some people that helped me find God. My grandmother was the first person that took me off the baseball field when I was 12 years, 11, 12 years old. And she said, let me introduce you to God. Not her words, but it came my words. And she said, sit down at this piano. I can't do that. That's not it. In that moment began a journey. I wouldn't say it was immediate. I found God by the time I was 14. And I knew that at that moment I would never need a therapist for the rest of my life because I had a creative expression that was dying for life. My father repeated it when he was 75. Constantly saying, my son plays the piano. My son plays the piano. I listen. And I know you've heard the story. I went home and heard beautiful piano music coming from the living room. And my father was playing for Elise. I thought it was my mother because she plays. And I went to go tell my mother how beautiful it was and tears came to my mind because I saw the presence of God sitting at the piano who waited 75 years to create. Was for Elise perfect? Not even close. But was it perfectly imperfect? Absolutely. There was a crack there. There was a beauty there. And I, I cried. What took you so long, Dad? It's in you. 
And don't tell my mother I'm saying this, but he played with more feeling and passion than my mother who had taken years of lessons. Something was born in the moment he decided that I can do this. My wife, Susie, many of her know, know Susie. She knew when I was in my mid-20s that I'd always had a dream. I love the old-time tap dancers. I just love watching good tap dancing. It has to be good. No. It doesn't have to be good or bad, and I'm living proof of that. <laughs> she came to me for my birthday, and she says, guess what? I've just purchased you six months of tap dance lessons. <laughs> and I got to a studio, and I learned to tap dance. I was never very good. The teacher kept telling me, quit playing the piano while you dance. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? She, she says, every time your feet move, your hands are going like this, <laughs> completely unconscious. And my crowning moment of being a tap dancer, the county fair, the Santa Cruz County Fair, I can't believe she's going to make me do this. Dance in public. I'm going to buy a paper doll that I can call my own. And I go out there, and there was me and 50 little six-year-old girls. <laughs> I was the musical director for a musical called Chorus Line at the time. I was directing the orchestra. And I come out at the county fair in Santa Cruz. This, and the chorus line was the cream of the crop dancers from three counties around. I'm going to buy a paper doll. Oh, hell. <laughs> the entire cast of Chorus Line was sitting in the front row. <laughs> a moment of choice, a moment of decision shut down everything within me wanted to run because I was not a good dancer. And I said, something wants to be born here. And I danced. And the embrace I got at the next rehearsal at Chorus Line was magic. They saw me differently. And guess what? That musical went from level three to level 300 because there was an intimacy with the orchestra and the music conductor at that point. Suddenly, we were dancing together even though I was behind a set with a baton or sitting at the piano. How many people here have taken Sonia's painting class? I used to watch, what, what is Bob? I never remember his name. The last name, Bob, was the painter on the, Bob Ross. I used to watch him, and he would take that brush, and he would go, a tree. <laughs> and I would say, I can do that. Something wants to be born within me, and I'd go, a mess. So I quit. I shut down a deep desire to paint. And then I met an angel who said, anybody can paint. To this day, I have three works of art, beautiful masterpieces created from the Christ of my being that decorate my wall at home because of Sonia. We said, you can do this. She saw something, and she called it out. Now, nobody is coming into my house and saying, oh, who painted these? <laughs> but every time I walk into the room where my piano is, my therapist, my sanctuary, my God, to my left is a visible demonstration that there is more of me to offer. Transcending good or bad, better than or less than, there's a part of me hanging on the wall, and that is not preparation for Easter. That was really inappropriate, wasn't it? I remember the moment I got into theater and I met people in my closed environment. You want to stretch yourself, go hang out with theater people. There is no box that exists in that world. And I found the complete and utter joy of making somebody laugh by being a clown. By falling over myself and doing a pratfall, having a child in the audience laugh. I found God. I found God in the theater as much as I found God in churches. And I know I see some heads bobbing. You found it too. Sometimes church people have the biggest walls to tear down. Sometimes religious and spiritual people have the biggest monstrosities to push over before they can just be fully themselves. Tear down the walls. 
You don't have to join the theater to tear the walls down. You don't have to go to a paint class to tear the walls down. You don't have to have your grandmother pull you off the baseball field and play piano to tear the walls down. Your life is a work of art and can be a work of art. The words that are coming out of your mouth are masterpieces. Paint with all the colors within the rainbow of God's existence. I remember the moment with several ministers that introduced me to God and said, spirituality without walls. Spirituality not contained in one book or one teacher or one writing or one sacred thing. There was, oh my God, I can paint. God is painting with colors that are not necessarily known to the religious world to this day. Gospels are being written and you are a gospel. In the mind of God, you are a divine gospel waiting for expression. How dare you not share that? It's valuable. So how many of us live there? How many of us live dancing through life in the free expression of our light and our magnificence? Yeah, me either. Oh, I got one. Sharon back there. You know, I, I imagine there are people here that have experienced life-threatening things. And that puts you right on the edge of going, I no longer will play small. Could it be that a diagnosis could be the greatest gift? I don't know. But I do know that the people in this community who have come right to the edge of transcension, transcending, are the ones that seem to live a little more fully than the rest. I don't want you to have to be at a deathbed to discover the Christ of your being. But why do we stop? Why is it we stop? Fear? What are we afraid of? I'm afraid of embarrassment. I'm afraid, I'm, I'm doubting myself. I'm afraid of comparison. The greatest source of all suffering on the planet, better than, less than. Get that out of your vocabulary because that is a state of duality. It is a state of argument and it is a state of suffering. And nine times out of ten, you are harder on yourself than anybody else. There's a chorus line of people that want to embrace you and say, yes, way to go, when you're going, I suck. <laughs> Competition and the illusion. I want to put out there today, if you get nothing else, the illusion of this thing called perfection. Mmm, did you hear that? Mmm. The only sin, as I know it, can be traced down to one source. It is the turning over the power to embarrassment, doubt, comparison, restriction, judgment, competition, and the illusion of perfection. And it is the proverbial fall from grace. Somewhere you made a decision. I don't shine in this area. I can't shine here. I won't do it. I won't be. I can't. Don't wait till you're 75, 85 to sit down and play the piano. Don't wait till you're 75 to realize that the smile that you gave somebody in the store that you'll never meet again changed somebody's life. That the words that you were about to speak are the veritable essence of Christ being manifest on earth and will not find its portal anywhere but through you. That's how important you are. That's how essential and vital you are. Consider for a moment that perfection is the enemy of all creativity. Imperfection is beautiful. We're so concerned and judgmental about the subjective idea of perfection that we just play it safe and we do nothing. I don't want anybody sitting here today to have a tombstone. I go visit your, your grave and it says, I played it safe. I wanted to say, he failed. He looked like a buffoon. He got embarrassed. And boy, did he change my life. He fell down, made mistakes, and screwed up. And boy, did he change my life. That's the life that I want. The God, the love, the joy that we seek is found in the realization that perfection is a man-made construct, not a God one. Perfection is a man-made construct not a God one. And our job is to get out of the way and let God have its way with us. Use me. Say that with me. Use me. Use me in such a way that this life is transformed, that the human race is transformed, that when I leave this earthly existence, that something beautiful, a legacy is left in the wake, not just with family, but with strangers who will carry the story of the interaction that you had with them long after you've interacted with them. 
There are people in my life, I've told stories about those that I'm close with, there are people in my life that said one thing to me and I carry the ideas with me today. Somebody, and you've heard me say this, somebody stopped my wife in, a, in the grocery aisle one time, went past her and then chased her down with the cart and said, you smell like a woman a man would want to come home to. <laughs> Woo, out of the box. <laughs> went on her way. That woman has no earthly idea that she transformed my wife's life in that moment. Transformed my life, too. <laughs> in the book of Genesis, it says, In the beginning, the earth was void. It was without form. My interpretation would be to translate it this way. The void can be chaos, emptiness, lack. My interpretation is, in the beginning was the place of I don't know. In the beginning of all creation is that place between the trapeze bars where you're going, I don't know. On oh boy, does the human ego want to run. Let me just grab something. Jerry, Jerry Epps and I were talking about this, and we're going to have a whole talk on this exercise of what do I do when I'm hanging there. You create. You manifest. You live at the fullest. A beautiful place that the human ego will run to just grab something. And look for opinion. Look for validation. Stop looking for validation from anybody. And validate yourself. And to know that right what you're creating in that moment is beautiful. It is sacred. It is necessary. Nothing to control. Nothing to dominate. Nothing to manipulate. A blank and empty canvas. Sitting at the feet of other people. The masters who say, just put the paintbrush on there. And you keep working with it. That mess will become a tree. Yep, and it did the beautiful tree that will hang on the wall of your life as it hangs on my wall. Life is beckoning us to a vacant dance floor saying, dance with wild abandon. But what? Oh, no, no. Christ, God, is saying, I created you to create. Why do you stop it? You start and then somebody looks at you, no, and you shut it down. This week, I'm saying, dance as if nobody is watching. Sing like nobody is listening. Live your life that you don't give a hoot what anybody else thinks about you. And guess what? You give permission for everybody around you to get on the dance floor. Ever been at a dance where you're, you're all sitting around the outside edges of life, and you're going, who's going to get on the dance floor first? And everybody just waits, and the band is kicking it into high gear, saying, what is wrong with these people? And then suddenly, Atiba Davis. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's his signature move. <laughs> and suddenly, there's a full dance floor of people saying, he's giving me permission. You see, your creative expression is not just saving your own life, it is saving humanity's life. It is giving permission and opening up the field and the dance floor to say, there's more of you. But we're so concerned, we've shut down, we've created walls that get higher and higher and higher. It's getting warm in here. Whew. They didn't have to hardly move at all. Dance like nobody is watching, and you enter a quantum field of possibilities. No preconceived ideas of what is perfect and what is imperfect, what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. Pure potentiality, that's the kingdom of heaven. That's God. Consider today that every part of your life, every word, every thought, every impulse, every desire, every feeling, and every creative movement within your mind and your heart is not there by accident. Paint, cook, garden. Is Jay here today, Jay Schofield? There he is. Go back and take a look at the painting and the creation and the Christ happening in the back of our parking lot. Every Saturday, every Wednesday, let me get my hands into the soil of earth and create something out of nothing, out of chaos, out of emptiness, out of, out of the void. That back parking lot, at one point, where's Janet? There's Janet. Let me tell you, the hardest working woman on the planet who gets back there and says, 
This is what wants to happen here. Let me be a part of bringing it forth. And she was there, I think, at the very beginning when we were pulling vines 10 feet high in the air. I don't see a possibility here. Chaos between the trapeze bars. Thorns, bleeding thorns from pulling out those weeds. And a work of art emerged out of vision, out of possibility, out of not knowing. The I don't know. You see, a painter uses light and dark to create the masterpiece. Use the light and dark of your life. We're about to enter the Easter season. And we're going to hit straight on the beauty of your darkness. The beauty of those places that you want to hide. We're going to hit it head on. Mary Allison's coming next week, and I have no idea where we're going to go. But I know it's going to be dark. And I know it will be juicy. And it will be creative. And it will be beautiful. The musician and the singer use nuance, texture, loud and soft, major and minor keys, interchangeably to reveal the symphony, to reveal the work of art. Why in the world are you shutting down the minor keys, saying they're not good enough, they are necessary to the opera of your life? The dancer uses every single part of their body to create a vision of God by another name. Anybody ever watch somebody dance and it brought you to the place of tears you wouldn't recognize it if that ability didn't exist in you and I'm not saying get up at the county fair and do a tap dance I'm saying let every action you take in your life washing the dishes be the creation of a work of art let the embrace when you leave here today that person that you haven't seen for a couple of weeks let that embrace be a dance of God meeting God of light meeting light, of Christ meeting Christ. Something beautiful is created, no less important than the symphony, no less important than the work of art, no less important than my tap dance or anybody else's tap dance. This is what Matthew Fox has to say, and this is so vitally important. Let's read this together. A secular society that is devoid of spiritual vision will not produce anything but entertainment and will succumb to the selling of the artist's soul. Why is it that we respond to Sonia's soul before she even opens up her mouth? Do you, get, you feel that? Sonia will see him. <gasps> before she ever sings a note. Because when Christ is meeting Christ, it's been rehearsed. Because she brings into the field artistry. Artistry of being, artistry of thought, artistry of perspective. And she's really uncomfortable right now because I'm doing this. She doesn't like when I brag. But you know what? I call out light when I see it. And around this room is a whole bunch of examples. People that said, I bought you dance lessons. Let me be one of those. I'm buying you dance lessons today. I'm creating an art class and I will pay for it. She paid for my art class. That's the only way she got me in there. I'm paying for your art class. This week, you're going to come face to face with your own limitations. You're going to come face to face with your own consciousness where there is an opportunity to fly. And you're going to make a decision. What decision are you going to make? Too many of us have sold our soul to human judgment and shut down the God essence of our very being. But it's not just religious people saying it. Let's take a look at what Albert Einstein had to say. We've been quoting him a lot lately. It's pretty amazing that the world of science is caught up to religion. Um, Let's read this together. The purpose of both art, the cosmos. You have one purpose on this planet. To nurture the inner artist, the inner minister, the inner teacher, the inner light, the inner lover. To keep alive the cosmos, cosmic religious feeling we belong to each other. And it doesn't matter what arena you happen to be in. We will not make exceptions to where we can be the painter, the dancer, and the artist, and the musician. going to mention somebody said quit mentioning politics but you know what politics is no different than church and the principles that we teach here are no different when you're talking about the government than when you're talking about God because it is all God bring the cosmic religious feeling to the environment of the argument 
bring the cosmic religious feeling to the midst of the disagreement in your family. Oh, God forbid, bring the cosmic religious feeling to work with you tomorrow and be the conduit for a better work environment three weeks from now. It's the way law works, spiritual law. Be the change you want to see. Don't wait for somebody else to do, be that change. We're about to enter the Easter, the Easter celebration, and there's a whole bunch of people saying, okay, the price has been paid. Somebody else took responsibility. Great. Work is done. The work is never done. The resurrection, the born again, is every single moment that you make a decision to give life to that which is within you, and you don't shut it down. We as human species fear the Imago Dei. Say that with me, Imago Dei. Together, the image of God in you. The image of God in us. We fear our own divinity so desperately that we shut it down. A lot of authors, Marianne Williamson being one of them, who talked about we're not afraid of our darkness. We're not afraid of the failure. With the reality is at the bottom of it, we're afraid to shine so brightly. Oh, my God, I'm going to be held responsible for the light. Stop fearing the imago day of your being. Scripture says in the book of Exodus, Thou shalt have no gods before me. Yet we have made your opinion my God. Your critique of my dancing God. Your judgment about my painting on my wall or how good I play the piano or don't play the piano or how I smiled. We have turned as a human race to your opinion being God and no longer the God of our being. Stop. No more. I'm saying no more. So what's the answer? Well, I have a pat answer. Unity has a pat answer. Get still this week. You have a palette within you. There is a palette of color beyond anything you have ever experienced. Get still. Get in touch with that spark, that color, that image, that vision that wants to be birthed through you and you alone. And I want you to look at this. Could meditation itself be a means of artistic expression? I want you to consider that. Meditation and prayer as a means of artistic expression. I hope so. What if meditation was not just about shutting out the external distractions, pretending they weren't there, but it was about accessing the inner gardener, the inner cook, the inner dancer, the inner poet, the painter, the gardener, the sculptor, the musician, the light, the Christ, by answering the call of that creative impulse and then using all of the external possibilities as a means of expressing you. I think sometimes the meditation world has gone, I just want to escape. No, have new eyes. Out of your meditation, all of this physical manifestation, this five sensory world becomes a great opportunity to dance with each other, to play in a symphony with each other. And then examine the thought that says, nope, not me. You want a resurrection this April? Dance. Clean house of what keeps you from dancing through your life. Meditation is your palate, and then out of your meditation comes the strength and the courage to express fully the way you were created in the image and after the likeness of creativity itself. Get okay with going to the void. To create is to begin over and over and over again to return to zero. The human ego doesn't like zero, does it? Because we're living in comparison. Zero isn't enough. Zero isn't good enough. Yet any painter, artist, and singer will tell you, zero is the place where the magic happens. Scripture says the void is where the beauty happens. Let yourself be devoid of all thought except I am here to be used. I'm going to leave you with a final quote before we go into meditation. And the meditation experience is going to be very free form. It's going to be a musical in free form. But I invite you to read this quote from the German poet Rilke. Together, you must give birth to your images. They are the future waiting to be born. Fear not the strangeness you feel. The future must enter into you long before it happens. Just wait for the birth, for the hour of new clarity. The time is now. You are the people. The hour for new clarity.
for new birth to be born again and again and again is now. You are the mother of God. We are the mothers of God. Meister Eckhart said that first. We are the caretakers of creation, and we are the midwives of love. Stop being selfish by playing small. And for every person that doesn't like the painting you put on your wall, there's a thousand that said, what took you so long? Thank you. Let's go into a time of painting and dance in the stillness and the quiet. We have a song to take us there, or are we just going to go right into the song? All right. And I'm going to invite Sonia. She has two very special, beautiful creators that uh, are with her today. I'm going to let her introduce them and let, us, let them all take us on a journey of dance and of music. <laughs> 